Hello, I'm Professor Sims, and this is a short video about assembling and using the Foldscope. And I call it Foldscope Instructions, aka Mistakes I Made, because I ran into some problems when I was first trying to use the Foldscope, and hopefully this will help anyone that may be having the same problems. The fold scope was inspired by origami. It is really important that you follow the instructions very carefully when you're folding and assembling the parts. Your kit comes with written instructions. You'll see some videos embedded within this PowerPoint, but also the links are at the end. So if you don't have access to the PowerPoint slides, you can still find the videos. I do recommend having this set up here. When you are assembling your fold scope, have the written instructions and the videos close by and make sure you're doing it step by step and follow everything as carefully as you can. This video here is embedded. It's the full 11 minute assembly video. And again, that link is going to be at the end of the presentation as well. So this does actually take you through all of the steps. Once the fold scope is completely assembled, it's going to look like this. This is the front. Um, this here is a coupler that is holding the lens. You'll see the lens on the other side in just a second. This is the focusing ramp. These are panning strips. So the blue side is the front side. You see the fold scope instruments logo here. And then the back side is going to be the yellow side. This here is the lens that is being held with that coupler that you saw on the front. And there is another coupler here on the flap. Once you have your fold scope assembled, you can use it to view slides. Um, you do have some pre-prepared slides that come with your kit, but if you are going to be preparing slides, you can make wet mount slides with either glass or paper slides that come with your kit. You can do stained specimen if you're using glass slides. Through the course of the semester, you'll learn about dry mounts and wet mounts and different staining techniques. Again, this here is a video. It is embedded in the PowerPoint and it's also listed at the end. And it takes you through preparing different kinds of slides, how to use cover slips, how to do glass, how to do paper slides. This is another video that um, illustrates how to insert the slide properly into the fold scope. You do want to make sure that when you're putting the slide into the fold scope that you're inserting the slide such that the specimen itself is facing the camera. And as she's showing you here, you're going to put the slide where the arrows show you to insert the slide. There's like little yellow tabs. Right, so you put the specimen facing the lens. Open up the little tabs there, see the arrows? You're going to put the slide right in between those two arrows on each side. And then once you have the slide inside of the little tabs where the arrows are, then you're going to move the slide to where the specimen is going over top of the lens like that. And there's a magnetic coupler that will couple to the lens. It may be helpful to draw a little circle around the specimen with a Sharpie in order to better align your specimen to the lens. Um, and then once you have your slide in place, you can view with your eye or you can use the phone coupler to connect it to the camera on your phone. Um, I find that this is going to work a lot better than trying to look at it with your, with your eye because the camera kind of gives you something bigger to look at, first of all. So instead of just looking through a little peephole, uh, you'll have a whole screen that you can look at. And also, once you find something with your phone camera, you can take pictures of it and use those for your lab reports. You, and you can also um, zoom in. You can take video if you want. And for viewing specimen, the types of specimen you're going to be viewing for this class in the micro lab, you're going to have human hair, 
your endothelial cheek cells. One of your slides has a fungus on it. You've got some bacilli bacteria, cocci bacteria, um, and this is gram negative. You can tell because it's pink. And this is gram positive. You can tell because it's purple. And then this is uh, from your pond water specimen. You can have any number of things in there, including algae, plankton, um, diatoms, euglena, paramecium, all kinds of things, spirogyra. So these are the things you're going to to be viewing with your fold scope. Now here comes the troubleshootings. So these are mistakes that I learned from and I want to share what I learned with you guys. So first of all, when you get your kit, in the video, the assembly video, it says that you're supposed to have four little black pieces like like that look like this. And I found that I only had three. Um, I had two, what looked like two couplers and then a lens, except this is not just a lens, it's also a coupler. It's got the lens that is stuck to the coupler. The coupler is magnetic, so they're magnetically stuck to each other, but they're not supposed to be like that. So you can actually take this lens right off of this coupler, and that will give you three couplers. You'll have a coupler that goes into the yellow flap. You'll have a coupler that you can attach to your phone. And then this coupler is going to end up being attached to the lens except you want it on the you want the coupler to be on the front on the blue side and then you want the lens to be on the back on the yellow side and that way your lens is actually held in place if you're confused just check it out this is what the lens looks like by itself and then this is what the coupler looks like this is just what you saw here except flipped over so the other side of this coupler has that metal ring the other side of this coupler has that metal ring etc okay and this part is metal around the lens and it's attached to the bottom it's attracted to the bottom side of this coupler so when those two things are stuck together it looks like it's just one piece but it's not this is another video here showing what that looks like and how to separate them. All right, so it looks like one, two, three pieces, but it's actually four. So this here is what a coupler looks like by itself. And that's that. this is what the lens looks like by itself. And in my kit, this is what it looked like. Those two pieces were stuck together. And all you have to do is bend down one corner of the coupler, just like that, and then lift the lens off of it. You would not believe how much trouble that gave me. And then once you have it assembled, the coupler is going to be on the blue side. And then on the underside, you have to put, so this is that coupler just on the on the opposite side and you'll put a ring sticker here and you attach the lens here and in that way the sticker and this paper and there's stuff holding those two things together and they're not just attached magnetically I found out the hard way that if you don't attach it correctly then every time you couple your phone to the lens it will pull the lens out of the fold scope I was having so much trouble so if you're having that problem that's that's an easy fix and then the other coupler here that goes on the flap, you just want to make sure that you're putting it in correctly. So this is this is where it's open still and you haven't folded this piece over into and put these tabs here. Put the coupler in here. You want to make sure you're covering these little red and white dashed lines, right? And then when you fold it over, it's going to look like this. So just make sure you're putting those in correctly. You want to make sure that those holes are on the side that they're supposed to be on. If you notice, there's like this little paper bridge here and a little paper bridge here and this one's longer you want to put the side that has the holes on this longer side it makes sure that everything lines up correctly and it makes sure that everything stays in place and another issue that I was having was the flap was bulging out um, and what what is happening here with this flap in the coupler that's on this flap is it is mag magnetically attracted to the lens and it helps to hold your slide and your specimen close to the lens. So if this thing is not attaching properly, it's not going to hold everything together like it's supposed to. And I found that when I was first trying to use it, I, I did the bins like it said. I thought everything was right, but this thing was bulging out like crazy. And it wasn't holding together properly like I was trying to hold it together with my hands. So I figured out how to fix that. 
there was a couple of problems actually. One was these little tabs were sticking up and they're in the way they were pushing this out. These little tabs like where the slide goes in, they're not supposed to be sticking up like this. You, they're supposed to be flat. So you want to try to flatten those down just by pressing them down, pushing them down, or maybe even bending them a little bit as much as you can. I'm trying to get those flat so they're not pushing that flap up and away from your slide. And another problem that I just noticed was that the folds were just not even enough. They weren't crisp, clean folds. So I just took and, and bent them, kind of reshaped them with my fingers until the fold was much more square. And then my bulging issue was resolved. No more bulge. And then one more issue I was having was with the focus ramp. The focus ramp is this piece here that goes just behind the lens. And it's really thin on one side and thicker on the other side. And you want it to be that way because what it does is it moves your lens closer or further away from the slide. And that's how you focus it. Well, I took mine out after I had it all together. I took it out and had a look at it. And the folds were just kind of round rounded out and not even and, and just not lining up properly. So I actually rolled it back open, like unfolded it and then recreased all of the little folds and put it back together. And that made the edges much more square. And that's what you want. So th if this is, this is looking at the fat, thicker end of the focus ramp, a cross section, if you will. And this was before where things are kind of poking out and uneven and look kind of smashed. And this is after where things were much more squared off. And well, one more thing is you've got to make sure that you have bright light. So when I was first trying to use it and I was getting frustrated, I just figured out that the light that I was using, it was kind of a little bit too dim. It was a little bit too yellow. And so I took it outside and used natural light and it was much brighter and much easier to focus. And you can use natural light through a window, like a bright kitchen, something like that, or outdoor light, but please make sure you don't look directly into the sun. I don't want anybody to go blind, okay? And also, I actually spoke to the creator of Foldscope when I was having all these issues. They helped me out. They helped me to figure this stuff out. And he recommended using a table lamp where you because you can actually, if you have like one of these desk lamps, table lamps that are adjustable, you can actually move this light around, which makes it easier if you, you know, to kind of point the light where you need it to go when you're trying to focus it. And I tried it and it's, so it was amazing. It was a big difference. So here are the links to the embedded videos and links to more information. This online user guide, if you navigate to this page and you uh, click on the button that says troubleshooting facts, there's more information there. This one here is good. The oops, there is something wrong with my fold scope talks about putting the couplers in the right direction and what happens if you don't, you know, that kind of thing. Um, and also there's, there's links in your lab procedures. And obviously, please, if you're having trouble still, you know let let us know we'll try to help you out okay thank you guys for watching make sure you read through this stuff watch your video watch the videos if you still need any help also you can leave questions for me in the comments below